Hello, this is Dr. Bob DiMaria, the drugless doctor, and today we're going to talk about memory. What a scary thought. Could you imagine waking up one day and you can't remember? Probably one of the most frightening things that I learned from my mom some time ago is the day that she told me that really bothered her when she knew that she was starting to lose her grip on her memory. Sad, isn't it? You could have all the money in the world, but if you don't have your memory, it's a sad way to go. Let me share this with you. I'm going to give you some tips. Let's have a big grin on our face, everybody, because it doesn't have to be that way. There's a part of the brain, ready for this, called the hippocampus. I'll say that again. The hippocampus. If you can't remember a hippocampus, just remember hippopotamus. That's the part of your brain that's for memory. Here's a little nugget for you. Zinc is very important for the hippocampus to work. What depletes the body of zinc? Wheat and soy. That's why you're doing your body a favor by minimizing and or eliminating wheat because wheat and soy take zinc out of the body. How do you know if you have a zinc deficiency? Look at your fingernails right now. Do you have white spots on your nails? Do you have large pores on your face? Do you have blood sugar distress? See, zinc helps make insulin. Are you having some memory slips? And men, do you have pain on the inside of your heel? See, you need zinc, gentlemen, so your prostate won't swell. A swollen prostate can cause heel pain. Here's a couple other thoughts when it comes to memory. So we talked about the hippocampus. I have learned over time that individuals have subpar thyroid function tend to have a little bit of a memory issue. Do you have cold hands and cold feet? Constipation? Wake up tired? Have fatigue constantly? Those are body signals of a low thyroid gland. We've just associated that with patients coming into the office. Low thyroid gland, memory issues. Here's what I've learned from ladies that have come into our office. Sometimes between 45 and 55 years old, as they're going through their menstrual change, at the last part of their menstrual cycle, when their estrogen level is dropping, for one day, they tend to tell me that their memory, they have to really grasp to have words come to their thought process. So I wonder sometimes if a menopausal woman that has inadequate estrogen could be a memory issue. Let's talk about Alzheimer's and dementia because Alzheimer's is actually a form of dementia and you hear a term called vascular dementia and vascular dementia is when the blood vessels will get smaller. Alzheimer's is the name of a German physician that started to see traits in individuals that were having memory challenges. Well, in my practice, we do mineral tissue analysis to hair. It's kind of like forensic medicine to hair. And what I have seen, and you're going to love this little bit of a nugget, we'll see elevated aluminum levels, elevated aluminum levels in individuals who have exhausted adrenal glands. How do I know if you have an exhausted adrenal gland? Well, on the same mineral tissue analysis, you have low sodium and low potassium. We talk about this in Dr. Bob's Drugless Guide to Balancing Female Hormones and Dr. Bob's Men's Health, The Basics. So if your adrenal glands are tired, they're not moving the extra minerals out of your body and you have an accumulation of aluminum. Other body signals for adrenal gland subpar function, does bright light bother your eyes and you get dizzy from a sit to a stand position. Common low adrenal gland body signals. But most recently what I've discovered is arsenic toxicity in our patients who have been diagnosed with dementia. That's right. I have patients that come into the office with dementia. We have the ability through a galvanic skin response, and we can do this to you anywhere in the world. It's a non-invasive galvanic skin response. We see elevated arsenic levels. Where might that come from, Dr. Bob? Herbicides and pesticides that are sprayed on plants, especially sugar. That's right. 
We're starting to do research on this and we are finding that individuals who have memory lapses tend to have high arsenic. You could have high arsenic in apples and apple juice. So if you're going to consume apples, and I recently had a patient that came in, their arsenic levels were off the charts and they have apples and apple juice every day. And apples are a part of Dr. Bob's ABCs, a half a red apple every day, third cup of beets, four or five baby carrots. But if you're going to do apples, you want to make sure that you're doing organic apples. We also have the ability that we can test with an essential fatty acid blood spot test. A little prick of blood on a blotter, you'll send it to a lab, we can actually do an assessment of your essential fatty acids and the most important one is one called DHA and we talk about this in Dr. Bob's Guide to Stop ADHD in 18 Days. You see altered DHA function in the body interrupts brain patterns. So we could literally forecast right now if you have the potential to have Alzheimer's or dementia with a simple blood spot test and mineral tissue analysis. It is so awesome that technology has caught up with what we have been saying for four years. So what should you start doing right now? Eat at least a fourth of an avocado every day. Great source of carnitine. That's important for cognitive memory and thinking and behavior. Take some flax oil every day, at least one tablespoon. Minimize sugar and wheat and soy. We also have available an aqueous zinc test. You can go to our website, druglessdoctor.com. In the aqueous zinc test, if you don't taste the zinc, you may need to supplement yourself with this. This is very serious and I'm here to make a difference for every one of you. If you follow a few of these tips, I promise you, you'll remember you did.